the moment many eagerly awaited and others feared, has arrived. On April 8, 2024, the United States will witness a cosmic event of epic proportions, a total solar eclipse. But this is no ordinary astronomical event. It's being interpreted by scholars and religious leaders as a prophetic sign, possibly indicating times of change. Are you prepared for this moment? Mysterious. Join me as we explore the details and most significant developments of this extraordinary event about to occur in the United States. The total solar eclipse on April 8, 2024, is more than just an astronomical spectacle. It's an opportunity for us to pause and reflect on the universe and our place in it. Imagine the moon completely covering the sun, turning day into night for a few moments. This phenomenon reminds us of the magnitude and beauty of the cosmos and invites us to contemplate the wonder and mystery of the universe we live in. It's not something that happens every day. In fact, few generations have the privilege of witnessing a total solar eclipse spanning across all of North America. So, get ready for this once-in-a-lifetime event and join us to discover more about this extraordinary moment awaiting us. Are you ready to witness this cosmic wonder? Don't miss out. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave your comments so we can all enjoy this historic event together. But what makes this eclipse so special? Is it just another rare astronomical event, or is there something deeper happening? Some religious leaders are raising questions about whether this eclipse could be a sign of something greater, something of a prophetic nature, or even a divine judgment. It's understandable that these questions arise. History is full of examples of people interpreting astronomical events as signs from God or warnings of significant changes in society. And when it comes to a total solar eclipse that truly darkens the day, it's hard not to feel a sense of mystery and deeper meaning. Some people turn to scripture seeking to understand this event, searching for biblical passages that speak of the sun being darkened, interpreting these events as signs of spiritual and social changes. For them, the eclipse is more than an astronomical phenomenon. It's a divine manifestation, a reminder of the presence and power of the transcendent in our lives. On the other hand, there are also those who see the eclipse simply as a beautiful spectacle of nature, an opportunity to witness the grandeur of the cosmos and reflect on our insignificance in the universe. For them, the eclipse is an opportunity to marvel at the complexity and beauty of the world we live in without attributing any meaning beyond the scientific. Regardless of how each person interprets it, the solar eclipse offers us all a pause in our daily lives, an opportunity to stop, look up, and remember that we are part of something much larger and more mysterious than ourselves. Regardless of how each one interprets the eclipse, one thing is certain. It reminds us of the unpredictability and majesty of the universe. It's a humble reminder of our position as temporary inhabitants of this planet surrounded by mysteries that we are still trying to unravel. And perhaps at the end of the day, that's what makes the total solar eclipse of April 8, 2024 so special. Its ability to make us stop, look up, and contemplate the unknown. Solar eclipses always cause a stir, especially among religious leaders. Among evangelicals, there seems to be a special tendency to interpret these events as more than just a simple astronomical phenomenon. It's as if every time the moon decides to cast its shadows over the sun, modern-day prophets gather to analyze what that means in spiritual terms. Sometimes solar eclipses stir up so much religious interest because there's a certain spectacle to them. It's like the entire universe is winking at us earthlings as if it's trying to tell us something important. And of course, religious leaders are ready to decipher those signals. When it comes to evangelicals, many of them see solar eclipses as a kind of divine warning. It's as if God is signaling that something big is about to happen. And they're not just taking these signals out of thin air. They have biblical references to back up their interpretations. For example, there's that verse from the book of Joel that talks about the sun turning into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Now that sounds a bit like a solar eclipse, doesn't it? And of course, there's the book of Revelation, full of images of cosmic catastrophes that precede the end times. 
So, when a solar eclipse appears in the sky, hush, it's like evangelicals are flipping through the pages of the Bible, trying to find the chapter and verse that fit into the celestial narrative. And many times they find what they're looking for, which only further fuels the belief that something big is about to happen. Of course, not all Christians interpret solar eclipses this way. Some simply see them as fascinating natural events, without any deep meaning. But for those convinced that we are living in the last days, each solar eclipse is another confirmation that the clock of Judgment Day is ticking. And that can have very tangible consequences. I remember a solar eclipse that happened a few years ago. There was quite a stir among certain religious groups, and some even started preparing for the end of the world. They stocked up on canned food, built underground shelters, the whole package. It's easy to mock it, of course. But it's also important to recognize that faith is a powerful force in people's lives. If someone genuinely believes that a solar eclipse is a sign of the imminent apocalypse, that will completely shape how they view the world and how they behave in it. So, the next time you see a solar eclipse, maybe it's a good opportunity to reflect not only on the mysteries of the universe, but also on the mysteries of human faith. Because after all, what is more fascinating than the way we try to make sense of the inexplicable? We have the rapture and the judgment day, two of the hottest topics in the theological universe. It's like we're in a big Hollywood movie, waiting to see who the heroes are that will escape at the last minute and who the villains are that will face a terrible fate. But of course, this is much more than just entertainment. For many, it's a matter of faith and eternal salvation. So, let's start with the rapture. That concept that makes some believers feel like they're about to embark on the greatest journey of their lives. The basic idea is that, before the Great Tribulation, a period of distress and suffering preceding the end of the world, believers will be snatched away to the heavens. It's as if God is giving them a VIP pass to escape all the chaos that is about to come. There's a lot of speculation about how this rapture will occur. Some believe it will literally be like in the movies, with millions of people simply disappearing from the face of the earth, leaving behind only their empty clothes and shoes. Others think it will be more discreet, perhaps just a sudden sense of peace and elevation. But one thing is certain. For those who believe in it, the rapture is the ultimate promise of salvation and liberation. It's the opportunity to escape all the chaos and suffering of this world. Now after the rapture comes Judgment Day, it's the moment when everyone will have to give an account of their actions before the Divine Court. For believers, this is another moment of relief because they have already been snatched away to heavenly safety. But for unbelievers, well, let's just say it's not a good day to be on the wrong side of the fence. Judgment Day is when things get serious. It's when Christ, the Supreme Judge, separates the sheep from the goats, the righteous from the wicked. For believers, it's a moment of reward and celebration, where they receive crowns and rewards for their faithfulness. But for unbelievers, it's the moment to face God's wrath and receive eternal punishment. It's a powerful image. This idea of a judgment day is as if all of human history were converging toward this culminating moment where each person will be confronted with the truth about themselves. And of course, this raises a whole host of questions about what justice is, what mercy is, what love is. Because, at the end of the day, the rapture and judgment day are much more than just future events to speculate about. They are powerful reminders that our choices and beliefs have eternal consequences. They are invitations to examine our own lives and ask ourselves on which side of the fence we want to be when the great day arrives. So the next time you hear someone talking about the rapture and judgment day, don't just think about theological theories or science fiction movies. Think about the profound implications these beliefs have for people's lives and faith, for how they view the world and how they live their lives. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. The return of Christ, a topic that never goes out of style in Christian circles, is as if we're all in a great suspense waiting for the grand climax of human history. But the question is, how do we prepare for something so monumental and at the same time so uncertain? 
Well, the first thing to keep in mind is that no one really knows when it will happen. This is where the importance of spiritual preparation comes into play. Because, you see, it doesn't matter if Christ returns tomorrow or in 1,000 years. What really matters is the state of our soul when He comes back. It's as if we're all in a big test of patience and faithfulness, waiting for the moment when the teacher finally collects our papers. So, how do we spiritually prepare for the return of Christ? Well, first and foremost, it's important to lead holy and godly lives. This means living according to the principles and teachings of Christ, seeking holiness in all areas of our lives. It's as if we're preparing to receive a very special guest in our home, cleaning every corner and preparing everything with care and reverence. But spiritual preparation goes beyond external actions. It also involves cultivating an intimate relationship with God through prayer and reading the Bible. It's as if we're building a direct line to heaven, staying tuned to God's will and seeking His guidance in all things. And of course, spiritual preparation also involves being vigilant and attentive to the signs of the times. Because although we don't know the exact moment of Christ's return, there are certainly signs that indicate that the great day is approaching. It's as if we're all looking up at the sky, waiting to see the first signs of the King's arrival. But here's the most important thing. Spiritual preparation should not generate fear or anxiety, but hope and expectation. Because ultimately, the return of Christ is not an event to be feared, but to be awaited with joy and anticipation. It represents the fulfillment of God's promise of final redemption and restoration, where all things will be renewed and restored. So, the next time you find yourself reflecting on the rapture, judgment day, and the return of Christ, remember that these beliefs have profound implications for people's lives and faith. They are powerful reminders of the importance of living a holy and godly life, of cultivating an intimate relationship with God, and of being attentive to the signs of the times. And above all, they are reminders of the hope we have in Christ, who promised to return and take us home with Him. Imagine that glorious moment when we are gathered with Him in His eternal kingdom, free from all pain and suffering and enjoying perfect communion with our Savior. What a wonderful hope we have in Him. If this message has inspired you and you would like to receive more encouraging and thoughtful content, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments. Your support helps us spread this message of hope and love to more people.